Hi everybody, this is Anas from Click Team, the lead developer of Fusion 3. Today we're going to show you a sneak peek of Fusion 3. So far in our development, we've mostly been working on Nucleus, a framework which is the core of Fusion 3 and Fusion 3 games. Nucleus has been in development for four years and we're confident it's become one of the most advanced 2D game engines. This is the interface for Fusion 3, and it's still very early in development. Many things will surely be changed and added before the final release. We'll post more videos over the coming months showing our development. Our editor is fully cross-platform. This is running on Mac, but the editor also runs on Windows and Linux. For this screen resolution, the text might be a bit hard to read. I'm going to start our video by scaling the interface to something of our liking. Our interface is resolution independent. Since Fusion 3 runs on the same technology as the games made with it, your own games and apps can support this as well very easily. Our user interface should be familiar to our Fusion 2.5 users, but we have simplified it quite a bit. We are however still adding features to the editor, so many will not be visible in this video. The interface is also fully user themable, so you can make your own changes to the appearance of the editor. Your own apps and games get of course also access to this theming feature, so that you can match the appearance of the interface elements to the visual style of your game. Today we're going to re-implement a small part of the Saucer Squad game that is showcased for this weekend's game jam, Weirder Stuff, but with some new Fusion 3 flair to it. I'm going to start by changing the name of this app to Saucer Squad. And I'm going to change the background color of the frame to black. Now I'm going to insert a few tiles from the Saucer Squad library. Now we could implement this the exact same way here in Fusion 3, but what would be the fun of that? For this video, we want to show a glimpse of where Fusion 3 differs from 2.5. I'm going to show you a new feature called Shapes, that you can use in the most common object, the sprite, also known as the active object from Fusion 2.5. You can change the shape from the common square to certain different shapes. I'm going to select the isometric cube, also for this tile. Let me insert a few more. So this doesn't look much like an isometric cube for you any longer, where this does. But I'm going to show you why in a second. As you may have noticed, only one of the tiles changed shape even though I have multiple instances of this tile in the play area. This is because of a new feature in Fusion 3. For some objects, you want different values at the start of the frame than the rest. In Fusion 2.5, there were only one property that could be unique per instance, the position of the object. All other properties were shared between all other of the same type. In Fusion 3, however, if the property is supported, you can set an individual value per instance if you wish. In this case, the shape is not shared among the instances, so you can choose a different one for each one of your instances. For your own games, it could be anything, any property. It could be different scale, health level, rotation, and more. So, for example, I can change the scale of one object, and the other ones will be remain unaffected. I'm going to change this back to 1. Let me just rearrange those to a nice grid. Let's run the app.
And now for the fun part. I'm going to go to the event editor. I can go directly there from this button, right next to the frame. So this is the event editor in Fusion 3. It looks very much like what you're used to, but there are several improvements despite us being early in development. If you have used Fusion 2.5 and earlier, you might recognize most of these default objects here at the top, with the exception of a new one, the layer icon. Each layer in your frame will now be directly accessible like an object in the event editor. This allows you to directly control each layer without having to meddle with the layer object, like in 2.5. So this layer represents this one. I'm going to start by adding a start of frame event. I'm going to scroll to the position of my UFO. As you might have noticed, the scroll to position action from the frame storyboard control object has been moved to the layer object. This means that you can scroll up your layers completely independently. We'll add options to have the layers follow the scroll settings from of another layer for the ease of use if you want to, like Fusion 2.5 style parallax scrolling. I'm going to add a new always event. Here I'm going to use the new set user matrix feature. I'm going to offset this layer with a half of the content size of my layer, which defaults to the frame height. You will see why in a minute. Now I'm going to add another always event and offset this UFO. To begin with, I'm going to set the user metrics to the rotation. which is the inverse of the of the layers rotation minus 45 degrees instead of 45 degrees and I'm gonna translate it afterwards zero zero hundred and fifty I'm gonna multiply these two together <coughs> 